what we found is publishing through Twitter and Facebook, Twitter we get some response, but definitely Facebook is the more dominant social platform on the island. And we get some posts, it, surprisingly we get a massive amount of comments on Facebook. Maybe we get, maybe we get one or two or none on the, on the article on the blog, but we may get 20 or 30 on Facebook. Um, and just you just can't judge what people are going to comment about. It's just the most strange thing sometimes as well. They they did really early website. They got on they got on the web really early, um, and you know they should be they should be acknowledged. They they did really well early on. It hasn't become that much more modern since. Um, and the way they write their stories is, they have every now and again they have these spurts of being quicker. Generally, what we're doing normal days, 10, 15, 20 stories a day. So there's, there's a big throughput. They went through a period of, of matching, trying to match that level of output, and then realized that, well, why would people be buying their newspaper if they could read it online? So they've dropped down the number of stories that they're doing on their website, and they're one, maybe two para, and the rest of it is trying to drive a sale by saying, read the rest of the story on Friday. And what we found is, quite often, there isn't a lot more story in, on Friday. <laughs> there isn't that much more length, and which, for us, is a breaking of trust. You can't say to people, go, go to the newspaper to read about it on Friday, if there really isn't that much more significant content on there. They're, all of their advertising comes, obviously, through the paper. They've changed the size of their paper now, so a page is about around a thousand pounds, just under a thousand pounds for advertising. So they're making a lot of money out of paper on a weekly basis. Um, so we're starting to, um, we, we think that their pricing on the, the web is pretty aggressive and unnecessary really. They don't need to kill, kill something that comes along before it's born really. So we wrote an article which was, um, do you want us to read the county press so you don't have to? <laughs> which <laughs> which <laughs> came out about maybe a month ago. No, less than that. And, and um, we've had a few emails from the editor since then. So he, he noticed that and was quite upset about it. <laughs> um, and we think pretty petulant about it, really, to be frank. Um, he was sort of saying, you know, you're trying to drive us out of business. We, we've got a process now that if something's reported, then we'll take the comment down if it's had two reports. That automatically comes down if it's had two reports. If it's had one, then we'll look at it when we can, and then some may you know, look at it and see if we think it's it's unreasonable or offensive or. or is that is that a plugin or is that something you? There's a reporting plugin. Yeah. Which is now escapes me right now. There normally is a plugin for pretty much anything you want to do. <laughs> Whether it's well written is another thing. If any of us did get a a threat of legal action, what would we do? Because I mean, m my instincts. Just the sheer thought of it is to find a cave somewhere and curl into the fetal position. But um, that's what it's designed for. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's obviously not the the best reaction. But like, say, Petty got served like a, a legal action, a legal notice, or whatever. What, what's the best action to take, or the best reaction rather? I would say, if you publish online, you don't do it personally. You do it through a limited company. Because that, at least that's <coughs> limiting your liability. I think with any legal issue, it's, a, it's about weighing up risk. So, so that's a factor. And what you're writing about, who you're writing about, you know, I mean, here you're writing about, in your case, you're writing about companies who are probably not particularly litigious or have big mm. legal departments or the luxury of suing people. So, so it, it, I think it just all depends on the risk of what you're writing about. What you don't want to do is spend five years building the content of a site. And then, and still have that in a shell company. The, as you say, that the, the legal way of doing it is you don't sue a man of straw. So if there's nothing there, there's no point in trying to get financial retribution from somebody if they haven't got anything. Mm. But if the idea of the, is to shut the publication up, mm. then if you take that limited company down, you lose the content, the content <coughs> as well. So we've got a mechanism that passes the content between that and another entity as well, if that was to happen. It depends how worried you want to be about it. Yeah. It's something that, that we're working with a, this London law firm with. We think that there's, there's a, people who do hyper-local stuff 
really need to have this protection because no one mm -hmm. wants to lose a house over it. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to put together a simple package with a level, number of levels on it. So people can have that reassurance, they can express themselves but not lose their house over it. If you could look back over the five years and, and give us a few points of advice, okay. what would that be? You, you've got to have fun with it. Uh, it's got to be something you're going to want to do and be driven to do and be excited by and enjoy doing. Depending on what you're covering, I mean, we, we have had times where we haven't enjoyed it at all. And it's been some pretty dark times, um, particularly if you're being you know, attacked for, for doing what you're doing. Um, these days we become pretty Teflon about that sort of thing, so that doesn't really affect us anymore. You've certainly got to be enthused by what you're writing about. Um, yeah, what else? Start off simple. Don't, don't try and do a massively complex publication first off. In the same as way with forums as well. Start them simply as well. Don't start with, you know, a hundred different rooms and then expect people to find their way through. Start with one thing and build up and get more complex as, <coughs> as demand requires. Um, I think something that we should have done earlier <coughs> is be you, you've got to get a payback for it and it doesn't have to be money if you're doing it as your only thing then it does need to, to have some money so you've got to think commercially about stuff as well which uh, for journalism is, is normally quite a, quite a strange connection to have but I think that's just the reality of running something small um, but your payback may not be money. It may be that you know you get access to gigs that you want to go along to, or um, it, 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 it'd be a myriad of different things that you might want to get paid for. But I'm not talking money. I'm talking about just pay uh, uh, something get something back for your time. So what was that for you? Um, I don't think we knew really, <laughs> and I think that was one of the mistakes. It, okay. was, it was just doing it. Just doing it. Um, and the, the, for us now, the commercial side is essential, um, and it's not natural for us at all. We're editorially driven, not commercially driven, but we've just got to change. We've got to change. So we're going through that pleasure at the moment. <laughs>